painting um, by Kim Jorlin in the window. So you can see it without all the reflection. We can send you images if we need to. Hi, wonderful to see you all. Um, so our space is pretty exciting. I'm going to flip the screen again and just give you a little tour around. There's the front door, there's our V, and here is our beautiful exhibition by Eric Olson. We are going to spend a lot of time with these works over the next hour, so I'm kind of buzzing through this faster than you would like. But when we have Eric with us, we'll talk about some pieces and we'll work our way through. We have um, such a wonderful community in Canada, in Calgary, supporting us and our endeavors and we received some beautiful flowers today. Thank you so much. Um, Be Social YYC and Jarvis and Shannon from Jarvis Hall Gallery. I don't have any vases here yet, but <laughs> these beautiful flowers. Thank you so much. Um, Eric is going to join us in about two minutes, but this is our new space. There's Mika our beautiful archway. That's our back door. Beautiful tiles, um, handmade by Becky um, at Workshop Studios. Becky Daisy McMaster, dear friend, and she and her partner Andrew of Salt Design have designed our space. Here's our shamazel back here, so you don't really need to see much of that, but. We're pretty excited about our new home. This is so exciting, so many people already. Thank you so much. Um, what have I got here? Just waiting for Eric. Hi, Shyla. <laughs> While we're waiting for Eric, you probably don't need to see my face. Some of these is, are, have already sold, I'm happy to say. Um, people have been pretty excited. Um, we have an online store for this exhibition. This is not something that we've done before, but it seemed like a great opportunity to try it. So um, through our website, uh, in the menu, the, the pull-down menu on the website, there's actually a link, a store. You can click on store and all of these works are there. You can cash out with credit card or PayPal right on the site. Um, and get some really great looks at these works as well. So feel free, while we're having our virtual opening with Eric, feel free to have a look at the store. Um, it's a little bit of a different way to experience purchasing art, but things are a little different these days, aren't they? Isn't she gorgeous? Uh, Nancy Salerno, the proud owner of this lovely piece. <laughs> I see you, Nancy. Hi. So these works are all charcoal. Charcoal and oil stick on paper. Just waiting for Eric. He's just connecting. 
Hi. Hi. There's Mr. Olson. Um, it's great to see your face. Yeah, nice to uh, sort of be there. <laughs> sort of be there. Hi. It's um, uh, wow. The gallery looks amazing. It I'm is so amazing. Thrilled with I'm, the space. I'm, I'm, I'm going to move this way so you can see your favorite wall. Yeah, I do love that wall. <laughs> you love that wall. <laughs> My works aside, I'm very excited to see the space. It's, a, it's a, <laughs> I'm floored. It's gorgeous. Um, I'll give you some different angles here. I just gave everyone a walk around, Eric. Yeah, I, I caught that. I, I was, I, yeah, I saw, but I wasn't a little late joining. That's okay. You're here now. Um, yeah. So uh, just for the sake of introduction, um, in case there are people who are joining our live that don't know you, Sure. Um, or me. I'm Vivian Mayer, founder, owner of Vivian Art Gallery, and we're in our brand new home in Inglewood, Calgary. Um, I did a little, you saw the, the street view and stuff. It's so bustling out here um, compared to my last location, which I also loved, but um, it's so exciting to have so many people in the street, so many vehicles. It's just, it's great. Um, and this is Eric Olson. Uh, Calgary boy, although you've lived a lot of places. Um, and you did your bachelor's degree in Vancouver at Emily Carr. Yeah. And in 2014, 15, you went to Dusseldorf to yeah. the Kunst Academy to study with yeah. Peter Doig. And we lost you to them. You're still there. So yeah. Eric is actually <laughs> with us from Dusseldorf. You're in your apartment? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's with us from Dusseldorf. Do you have a beverage? Uh, yeah, I've got a tea going on. You it's, have a tea? Uh, in, okay. Yeah, it's one in the morning here, so I'll... Uh, we have to do yeah. a virtual toast. I, I have a bottle of Riesling on, on hold, so okay, we can... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> a virtual toast to you, Eric, and to cheers. just a stunning exhibition. Oh, and I thank hope... you so much. And cheers, Mika. I hope that um, yeah, cheers, Mika. all of the people joining us from home are, or wherever you are, are also celebrating with us. It's a different way to celebrate, but um, we've got a great reason to celebrate. Um, what, what, are you, what are you doing up at two in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, cheers. I'm, I'm just amazed by the gallery. This has like, been a long time coming, right? A um, long time coming. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. Um, but very exciting. I, uh, yeah. I'd really love to have you talk about, I did a quick buzz around the gallery, but I'd really love to have you talk about, um, well, it's weird not having you here. <laughs> yeah, I, this uh, is the weirdest exhibition I've ever done, uh, just, you know, this whole thing, because I, I think it really began, you know, this would, this is our third uh, exhibition that we're, yeah. we're doing together. Yeah. Um, and we've been talking about doing this for a while, uh, but this is definitely not the show that we'd intended um, in the beginning. I mean, I, we were talking about a, a totally different, very colorful show. Um, and then at some point um, I started messing around with the charcoal yeah. and started, you know, started thinking maybe there's something I could do with that, but really was just experimenting and playing around. And then all of a sudden, this pandemic came out of nowhere. Yeah. And uh, seemingly, every, well, everything just changed. And, and, and the interesting thing, I mean, is, you know, I'm here in Dusseldorf and you're in Calgary and, and yeah. we both know exactly what I'm talking about. And this is yes, we know, do. It's just it's something that affected the entire world. And um, I just remember, you know, the thing, the moment I knew that the show was going to end up being very different was um, opening my door in my apartment here and just looking up to the sky. And, and often there's, there's a lot of air traffic in this area normally. And it just nothing, just quiet. And the whole city was quiet. It was right sort of in that, that sweet spot where everything was really locked down. Yeah. And it just seemed like you could just feel this sort of empty openness or something, this quietness. And, and as much as... Um, you know, this has been a devastating, horrific, um, you know, series of events we've all been witnessing. And I, you know, I feel for all the lives lost and people suffering. Um, 
but also there was something about that moment that I found just like um, something really was, you know, something really special was in that. Yeah. And I thought I should take note. And um, so I went back to the studio and all of a sudden it just, it, what I had planned didn't meet, seem to be uh, on point, you know? Um, the motorcycles and the bright colors and the... Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. something I, I want to I sort of publish later, right? Yeah. But yeah. in the moment, I just, I wanted to think about, you know, all the people um, that I, I couldn't see uh, because I was very much in isolation here and just decided... I was going to sort of dive into this and just, you know, to protect myself, but mainly to protect, protect others, you know. Um, and I just thought about sort of maybe trying to find a way to sort of condense down my portrait work somehow. Um, you know, it's, it's like I, I want to keep doing these portraits, portraits in general as an ongoing project, hopefully for my whole life. Um, but it also just felt like a time where I wanted to really... Um, sort of, yeah, condense it down somehow, boil it down to sort of the essence in this situation. And then um, let me know if I'm kind of rambling off topic. Here. You're awesome. <laughs> Keep going. Um, yeah. And then sort of in that time, I, I came across this, um, this Walt Whitman line. Um, it really okay, began I'm, from... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm oh. gonna to flip out, okay, and, and put it on the, on the piece. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it, it began from, from another Walt Whitman poem, actually, and, and a slice of that. And, and so this is just an excerpt from a, a much larger poem, but um, mm -hmm. it goes, do I contradict myself? Very well, I contradict myself. I am large, I contain multitudes. And it's like that, bam, like there's something in that that um, really caught my attention. Um, Walt Whitman, Whitman's somebody, um, you know, I'd heard about, but I, I just never read them. I, I, I heard somebody else say that it was really only until they were in their 30s that they, they got Walt Whitman at all. And and I can attest to that. Like, I remember reading it in my 20s. I'm like, I, I, what is this? It doesn't, it didn't click. But but now when I read it, it's like the lines are really rich. They're really full. Um, and so anyway, that I am large. I contain multitudes. And I thought about, you know, um, that was in, in that, those short lines he contained like everything I've been trying to do in my portraits which was something I'd found in India years ago but this idea of that everybody contains multitudes multitudes of ideas and emotions and experiences um, you know uh, Allen Ginsberg was talking about Walt Whitman and he was like you know all you have to do is think of a mountain or look at a mountain and that mountain's in your mind like that's a big mind you know <laughs> um and so I, I was really always have been interested in that and then from that i found this other walt whitman poem um that now the the title of the show comes from um among the multitude and so i'll just read the poem quickly because it's uh <laughs> my handwriting is somewhat illegible um in the poster um perfect so among the men and women the multitude I perceive one picking me out by secret and divine signs, acknowledging none else, not parent, wife, husband, brother, child, any nearer than I am. Some are baffled, but that one is not. That one knows me. I love her and perfect equal. I meant that you should discover me so by my faint indirections. And I, when I meet you, mean to discover you by the like in you and that poem just kind of like bam that it, it, it on one hand it's it's pretty straightforward it's just like a it's a maybe a scene at a bar or something a, a figure in a crowd of people and he looks through and he, and he or she sees somebody and they and, you know the eye is caught and a connection is made um but if you start breaking it down and that's kind of the fun thing about poetry that's so different than um you know, what I do is each of these words can kind of explode your mind out in different directions. And, you know, again, kind of thinking back to my portraits and the idea of, you know, the, the type or the, you know, the type versus um, the individual person. 
um, you know, the type, a parent, a wife, a husband, a brother, a child, you know, these are kind of types that the labels we put on people. And, you, and there's, you know, a thousand other labels, black, white, you know, young, old, whatever. Um, but in the line when he says any nearer than I am, it really brings it down to like, you know, the, the particular person. Um, so I love that. And then, you know, as, as I just kind of getting more, even just the faint indirections, like what a great line that is. Um, but also, uh, yeah, when I, when I meet you, I mean to discover you by the like in you. And, you know, what is the, li the like in you? What is the like in you? And I took it as sort of, you know, again, I'm thinking of my work, but um, the likeness, what is likeness? And what, is it, what does it mean to be like something? And so all of these portraits, I think, and I think all my portraits, they, they relate to likeness and the type and all these things. Um, but I, I like that in, in some of these in particular, but um, you, can, you know it's the person. If, if you know that particular person, you know, these are all my friends that I've drawn here, right? Yes. Um, and if you know it's them, or if you know these people, then you can tell it's them. And we can kind of agree on that. And I like that aspect of sort of portraiture or the idea of likeness, that there is, there's a truth to things, even mm -hmm. though, you know, from my perspective, it's going to look very different than from your perspective, but we can kind of agree that looks like Carrie or it looks like Sean or whatever. And there's something in that that I really enjoyed. Um, and then from there, just, and then I started really reading Walt Whitman. So I was making all these um, uh, drawings over the last three months and then reading a lot of Walt Whitman. And it just kind of keeps opening up. I mean, this guy was so, such an interesting artist. And so I don't, maybe I shouldn't focus on him too much, but it also for me, it's just really sort of interesting and kind of kept me going while I was making all these. Mm -hmm. um because he had such a fascinating career he was like in the, it was really in like the 1850s when he was writing a lot of his stuff so that's in the time of like the american revolution and abraham lincoln being assassinated and and so he wrote in 1855 his sort of um breakthrough self-published book um called the leaves of grass um and then in that is a very long poem um song of myself um and then throughout his career, he kept adding to that book, which is such an interesting thing. So it was like, it started as a book this big and it kept getting bigger. And, and, and he kept, he would go back into the earlier poems and rewrite them. So it was, um, it was, it was pretty interesting because Walt Whitman, I think really taps into so many of the values that I kind of search for in my art and, uh, and he he's far more eloquent than I, but you know this sort of this humanism this this like to there's a curator Kirk Varnado, he talks about like sort of the two basic things that art gives you and um and they sort of they intersect, and so one is really it's you look for art for something that's outside of your own time zone um that it's outside of your own time frame. Um, that's sort of beyond your own mortality, that you want to go look at um, Egyptian vases and you want to look at pharaonic sculptures because it gives you a sense of the enduring quality of the human spirit, something that's beyond my lifetime and yours. And it, there's something that continues through. Um, and then you also look to art for something that's faster than you are that's got a different beat that kind of throws you off and keeps you going and makes you alive and makes you aware that you're alive. Um, and reading Walt Whitman, I was like, wow, this guy's got those. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, uh, was, was Walt, well, it sounds like he was companionship for you in a way. Uh, maybe. I mean, you know, like when you're, I don't know, but it was, um, and then yeah, all these it, portraits it kept me going. And these portraits became companions. It was almost more like that, to be honest. <laughs> well, and I, I, I mean, I purposely walked over here when you started talking about the poem, because this is the crowd, right? This yeah. Is, this is the crowd, because right now, being in a crowd for real, although Alberta's beginning to sort of lighten things a little bit, is, is not really an option. It's opening up, yeah.
Sure. That's part of why you enjoy um, portraying people who you know personally or in some way, because you like bringing their character into the portrait. Yeah. Um, so even from that angle yeah. and direction, I'd just love to hear you talk about some of these. So shall I direct you yeah, or do sure. you want to tell um, me where to go? <laughs> do you really want to tell me where to go? Yeah, I, well, I think that's a good one to start at. Um, it's, um, you know, like I say, like when this whole kind of lockdown happened and, you know, you can't really be painting people or I couldn't really be the way I normally might. Um, I wanted to, I started thinking about wanting to sort of, yeah, like really condense or boil down like some of my portraits and, and see how they might stand up to kind of some extreme pressure or something like this. Or, um, um, and so this, this is a really based on an earlier painting and I'm still um, close with the person. Um, but I just wanted to see if I could kind of boil it down, see if it still stood up and, I mean, just in a formal way, I like that it sort of had this mask going on. Um, and, but that, that was the first one that sort of had these flower forms growing into it. And then sort of the next one over, um, that's of a friend of mine, Carrie, um, had a really interesting life, like living in Nairobi. And, um, but again, like those flowers started to really take over and something about um, what, just walking to the studio every day through the park became this mm -hmm. like really special thing. The green of the spring and Dusseldorf opening up, um, that became somehow this driving force that while I was doing the portraits, I didn't really know uh, how it related to the portraits to be honest, but I, I thought that maybe there was something in that that I could use. So I started kind of allowing the the, um, the sort of leaves and the vegetation to kind of grow into the uh, compositions. Um, mm -hmm. um, they're they're just striking. So, so what have we got next? Why don't we? Um, we have this one next. I'm just so happy that we were able to do. You know, because I love. Uh, uh, you know, I love a, a well framed work on paper. Sure, but there's something kind of pretentious about that I find. And, and uh, in every other way, paper is such a, uh, a simple sort of material or, or it can receive so much and it's so, so light. And, and uh, I'm so happy that we were able to do a show without them. I like when I did that just to kind of jump around a little bit, but um, cause I think the idea of showing the show this way came from uh, when I was motorcycling, you know, through the States in 2018, I, I went through Washington and visited the National Portrait, uh, the, not the National Portrait Gallery, the National Gallery. Um, and a friend from New York connected me with the, the director of the, the paper archives there. Mm. And so I met him for lunch and then, and then he was like, do you want to come see the archives? And I was like, yes, <laughs> very much so. So he took me in and, and it was just like a treasure trove. He was, they have all these boxes that you pull out he, he puts the box down and then opens it up. And then there's, uh, you know, 1905 Picasso self-portrait, unframed, no glass, just there. And uh, then he moves on um, uh, to show me these William Blake's unframed original watercolors. And I'm just losing my stuff at this point. But there was something in that that the Mary Cassatt's also, I mean, if anyone was ever a real boss draftsman, Mary Cassatt is, is in my top, top five for sure. But there's something about the, just the paper sitting out there sort of so vulnerable, but really rich in texture that I was admiring all these other works. And I was thinking like, wow, it would be amazing to do a show where it could be like that, you know, that they are sort of finished paper works. Um, and they're fragile and all these things, but you could present it somehow where it would, it would look great. And then when you told me you were thinking about making this new gallery, I was like, well, maybe, but didn't quite work for the etchings. That didn't make sense. 
you this know? is but this then is when gorgeous. I started doing these these I like it was really fun with these chocolates because on some level they're really um sensitive and like anything you do to them it, it lasts but in another way you could just have them kind of beat it around the, the studio and getting dirty and you know and they would just sort of pick up little bits and then now we can present them on these like this is a this is a virgin wall. <laughs> oh know? my! <laughs> yes, it is. So, this is the first show, but I I really love. I don't know. Cool. There's something really approachable about doing it this way too. It's like yeah, um, like the affordability of it. I mean, people still need to pay for a frame, but that can be their choice. But um, you yeah. know, we know your paintings. Your 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 paintings are still quite approachable from a price point too. You're still a relatively young guy, right? But um, but you know, some of the pieces that we've already sold and we've, we've had a good couple of days, <laughs> um, some of the pieces we've already sold were people that I just know have wanted one of your works for so long and we're s finally in a position where, oh my God, I can get a small drawing for $1,200. Um, I can get a, a medium sized drawing like, like one of these for $2,500. I mean, whereas a painting this size is easily five grand, right? Um, so it's uh, there's something really approachable about it. And also uh, it's just crisp and clean and beautiful. And you know, I'm a serious sucker for a paper edge. And, um, <laughs> and these, uh, these dark works like Sean here. Yeah. Yeah, the black have, is pretty good, right? That have that, um, yeah. sorry, I don't want to flip quite yet. That dark edge against that 17 foot white wall is yeah. just really nice. I magical. wish I could see it. I'm killing, I'm just I know. dying. I know, and I'll man. never see it. That's the weird thing. I'll never see this show. This is just like a show that I'll never get to see. And even in my studio, it's not like my studio is big enough that I could have them all on a wall like that. So that's sort of mm -hmm. a weird thing. Um, but yeah, yeah, the paper, I mean, it's, it's on this, uh, it's, it's cotton paper, French paper. It's just beautiful paper to draw on. And, and I was using these um, charcoal, um, yeah, they're, they're just like, you know, these sort of burnt sticks. Um, right. And, uh, and they're really a joy to work with um, just because you can put, you can be really confident and put down a line and they kind of, not quite right push it and then again and again and you're every time you're doing that you're just kind of adding to it building it up so mm -hmm. i felt really really free i felt like i could just draw however i wanted and, and if it didn't turn out then just that you know I, I i took them you know i try not to kind of give up on an image if i've started one um but at the same time it's not like there was a big risk involved of having a huge canvas that then you have to restretch or something yes it was quite um so I really enjoyed that. And then just um, afterwards getting into adding in some of the, um, you know, the other crushed crush pigments that then have a binder in them. And then, then, so that's how I'm kind of using some of those more flat and the really, really rich blacks uh, are a different. Um, uh, yeah. Those are sort of the, the chalk pastels. Right. Um, um, we have one outlier in the show. Let's, let's talk about green fuse. Yeah, well, that definitely is an outlier. That's that's the last one I did, um, and I had this big roll of this French paper, you know, and I was like, "Come on, you got to do, try a big one." And what I was talking about earlier, just with this sort of idea of this, you know, I you know, I think it was David Hawking said it. It was talking about the Corona virus, and he's like, "Well, spring's still going to come," you know, or you know, he said it better, but. <laughs> and I was walking through this park every day and it's a, it's, so it's a 15 minute walk through this insanely beautiful park. Um, just like, it's, it's really like a masterpiece of, of design, this park, and like just the structure of the park in the city. And I, I started thinking about, you know, the, the coronavirus and this sort of will, I was thinking of my grandma, to be honest, this, this will to live you know, mm -hmm. and how that's such a strong thing. And, and it really is to me, it, like having studied the planets and that kind of thing, it's like a force. It's the life, you know, the, the desire to live is a force, it seems to me. And then um, through someone, uh, you know, more well-read than I, 
uh, reminded me of the, the Dylan Thomas line, um, the force that through the green fuse drives the flower. <sighs> Again, I mean, it's, it's like the Walt Whitman, right? I mean, it's just, it, the line is too good. It's too good. So I thought, I thought I'd just take it or not even take it. I, I started thinking of the poems and everything as, um, you know, it's like a folk song or something, you know, it's right. like when someone writes a really, really good song, like, the force that through the green fuse drives the flower. <laughs> Someone can pick that up. You know, if it was a song, you could pick it up and, and play it. And there's nothing wrong with that. And so I sort of thought about it like, in that way that I, I would try to do sort of like a cover or, a, or my version of it or something like this. Um, but that was a really fun piece to do. Like I say, it was the last one. I had nothing to lose. And I just uh -huh. felt like I could just kind of go this, um, uh, this sort of... Um, I, don't, I was thinking of like almost deep space or something like this too, like these kind of exploding galaxies and of, of all these flowers that are just, so in that it's, it's a May Day tree and it's just sort of bursting open. So there's, there's the flowers that are opening up, uh, but then there's also the, sorry? Sorry, I just dropped my ear, bad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's an explosive piece. I love that. I love that piece of poetry um, that this piece is inspired by. And um, what was it, Dylan Thomas? Is that his name? Yeah, Dylan Thomas. Yeah. Um, and and I love how it came to mean something to you. And then you put it on the paper. And this is the way I, that that art works, and why I love it. You put it on the paper, and then it becomes available as a, a visual form of inspiration for someone else entirely. You know, it's just a wonderful way to communicate. Um, so. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. Um, can you hear me now? No? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, can, do you mind talking a little bit more about some of these people, for example, this character here. Yeah, let's go back. Oh yeah, uh, that's Sean. Um, yeah, so he's, I know. Uh, he's, my, he's my best buddy in a way, you know, he's, uh, he's a good friend. So he's, I think he's 69 now. Or something like um, of course he would be 69, Eric. I think he, he's, he's going on, <laughs> um, <laughs> he's, I think he's going on 90, five days in isolation right now, something like this. So I've been Skyping with him. Hold on just a second. I've been Skyping with him. And since this has begun, his beard has started growing and it's turned white. And, and just recently I saw it and now it's really white. His hair is really white. And I realized he, I mean, he sort of looks like Walt Whitman in my mind, but that wasn't the point of putting him in, but yeah, I mean, he's sort of like a big flower in that picture, I think, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the the life force, the, you know, what is it that pushes people on, right? Um, yes. But he's, yeah, he's a he's sort of like an old, old uh, mentor and friend and, yeah. Very good friend. So how, how wonderful. Had you drawn or painted him before? Well, I did a painting of him. Uh, like 10, 10 years ago. So this is, it was really it, before, you know, before he had like kind of almost it, like gray hair, but, and now it's just like, bam, it's white. It's so cool. Let's move down this one to this one. I'm just getting notes to the side on my camera work. Yeah. I, I went, I went from artist to art gallerist. And now in this ridiculous time, I've had to become this like social media, whatever, and I'm still only so good at it. So bear with me. People. <laughs> so this piece, can you tell me about this one? Uh, that's a self portrait. I thought maybe, but I wasn't sure because of the cigarette. Sometimes I'll a, have a smoke or something like that, you know, or, or something um, like that. And I, I liked, um, you know, doing these, starting them 
they're totally they're totally drawings you know and uh, that's how i'm thinking about them it's a drawing action it, it, um but at some point like i was saying with the sort of the dustiness of the the charcoal they really started feeling like it was almost like when they began their, their drawings and then when i'm finishing them and kind of dialing them in they really became in, in my mind etchings um and i was just I really felt like i was taking everything i'd learned from making etchings you know in vancouver um and, and sort of applying it here somehow. I really felt like I was sort of working on a plate. If that mm. might not make sense, but it, it somehow it's a, when you start getting into printmaking, you have to be flipping the image in your mind, but then you're also really thinking of a, a process and you're, you might, you know, to get over here, you might have to go there because then, then you'll flip it. And somehow that thinking about the lights and darks and forms, I don't know, but it um, felt like, in this one, it related to, like it made, yeah, it felt like an etching or something. It was really, it was fun to work on because it was almost like an etching, but it was so much easier because you, because you're just drawing with the pro, the positive image, right? Um, so it, the, I, I can see a lot of similarities to etching in this piece in particular, but in lots of them, but, and, and this black yeah. that you've managed to achieve, is that all, <laughs> that's charcoal? That's so yeah, the background is the um that's the chalk pastel. So it's a really, chalk really pastel. rich black. So it's almost just like pure pigment with a little bit of a binder. Um mm -hmm. and then but then I would really get I would um again like this this cotton paper was so lovely, like you could really grind after it's really rub it into the grain of the paper. Um and I was very happy with that black. I didn't. I didn't expect it would turn out that rich. I mean, it's not an etching black, but it's pretty close. You know how yeah. in etchings there's a black you can accomplish that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah, it's pretty close. Um, and then on top, sort of the final hit is going in with this uh, thick uh, oil oil pastel. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not it's not an oil stick like a oil paint. It, it's just like a really fat um, oil pastel. It's, that it's some be, of those other kind of gummy gummy. Would that be black. this line? But yeah, that's yeah, that's right. And the the sort of explosive eyes to the left of that, those um, sort of second set of eyes there. Yeah, that's that's with the the oil pastel. Right. Um, you can see it sort of affects the charcoal underneath a little bit. So that was fun too. It was, um, it was just like another layer of the print, sort of how I was thinking about it. Well, that's actually kind of one of the most engrossing <clears throat> things about your practice and watching what you do is that I can tell it's fun for you too. It's really evident. These were really fun. Like they, they it genuinely, like it's not always fun sometimes, but this whole set, it really felt like there was nothing, nothing to lose somehow. You know, I'm like um, the world. The world is shut down. Like just, it's, yeah. Just, just there, draw your friends. You know, it's there's easy. a couple of these that are more abstracted than others, and this is one of them. Yeah, that one's um, sort of uh, yeah. You know, it's a little, a little more difficult distorted. to talk about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, is that it? one's okay. A little bit. Yeah. So I should move on. Is that what you're telling me, Eric? <laughs> Maybe I mean it's it's just it's very sculptural. It's all that. It started out as a as a portrait of somebody, and 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 um, I think I'd rather not say who it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a loaded thing, but that's okay. I, I mean, you do a lot of abstraction in your portraiture. In fact, the fact that there's really only two that I would describe as this abstracted is almost unusual for one of your portrait shows. Yeah, I think Tell that one. I that one was really referencing an earlier picture, and then uh, um, uh, it it started out as a portrait of Jeff Spaulding, actually. Oh, okay. uh, to be and yeah, and and then to and be we honest, lost... I was just kind of letting out um, the intensity of that and sort of uh, the loss of a friend, and um, he, he was a good friend to you. Very strongly for him, he was, and and so that I think I didn't want to say because there's an aggressive quality to that painting that I wouldn't associate with him, um, no. and I'm not trying to kind of put that on him uh, because I, no. I did a very loving, colorful portrait of him, 
Mm-hmm. Um, and this is not that. And so, you know, but so, yeah. Guess that. Okay, we'll move on from Jeff. But yes, uh, it was a big loss this year to the art world. Yeah. Um, can we talk about these eyes on her yeah. chest? Those are, she really has those tattooed um, ah. on her. And which I just love because it sort of gives, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's like a cheap parlor trick kind of thing. Right. But, but that, that drawing her, her real eyes um, follow you around the room, you know, like wherever you are standing in the room, she's looking right at you. Um, And it's so much fun to play with that. You know, you've got that looking at you um, and then the, the tattoos on the chest, um, and I was really happy, like you you suggested putting that particular picture right there. I was so happy you did because it means you have to walk by her. So the eyes mm-hmm. sort of follow you as as you walk. Um, but yeah, with that one and in a very different way to the, the other one that we just talked about, but also um, with this one, very, very sculptural kind of quality, I think. Um, mm mm-hmm. And there's something about the charcoal that I, I felt like with with that one, um, with the eyes. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was, I mean, it's just classic bust, you know, a sculptural bust, but it's still fun to play with that, especially when you're doing it with some, a different medium. Um, but yeah, I had fun with the eyes. Very interesting, uh, yeah, character. Okay, I'm just... We haven't really spent any time with any of these small ones. You did a nice post about this one just yesterday, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll keep the path open, the path in my mind. I'll make sure there's no love left behind. That's Bob Dylan. Um, Bob Dylan. But I thought greats. that really fit. I really thought that fit with this one. Um, Yeah, just, you know, all the the different um, scenarios, sort of stories, baggage, everybody's got in their head, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. And sometimes it's louder than others. Yeah. But I like that one. I, I tried doing a bigger version well, I did do a bigger version, um, but I like the small one. So I just thought, just just show the small one. It's more sort of dense and focused. Um, but I really like that, the sort of, you know, having to, yeah, find find the path, right? Mm-hmm. And there's more flowers. Yeah, of course. This one I did, this one was sort of a playful one. This was... Um, so in Dusseldorf, there's Carnival um, or Carnival. And uh, and this is a friend of mine. It's a girl, actually, but she was dressed up as a boy for Carnival. And I thought she just looked great. And she had the flowers and everything with the cigarette. And I was like, I got to make a little drawing of this. And then so I made a drawing. And then later, um, so yeah, just to back up. So there, you know, there's the Carnival. And then like right after that, there was a an outbreak of, of COVID um, in a, not in Dusseldorf right away, but in a nearby city because, you know, and related to the carnival. So that everybody, everything went on like lockdown after that, right after that. So that was really sort of like the last time I'd been out having a great time with friends. Awesome. I don't want to go too far back because the last time I did, I, our Wi-Fi got a bit blurry. But okay. maybe I'll just quickly zoom in on this one so you can talk about it because I think its treatment is really interesting. Yeah, that's a, another sort of an outlier. I, I think it. I think it fits. But that that one's all watercolor, actually. Um, ah. Yeah, and it, I think it's got just sort of a glow to it. Um, sort of makeup on the face. Um, Again, just okay. sort of different identities. And, um... Um, I'm going to go back to our original piece because I haven't really talked about the poster. Mm. Um, so, Did you uh, notice the, the wild rose? 
there's a wild rose on that piece? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's 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 the wild rose, you know, from the the Alberta license plate. It exactly is. I'm flipping this hand. Calgary, Alberta. I couldn't fit Alberta, so you know, I was like, oh, the wild rose. That's hot. It's perfect. So what's really special about this piece? A lot to this. First of all, it's Eric's profile. And Eric, you and I have been friends for a long time now. Eric yeah. uh, and I were studio neighbors in the old Cannery Row studios in Calgary. And like, I guess it was around 2011 and 12. I think 2012. I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's when we first met. Yeah. And uh, and then I opened my gallery in 2013 and you were still around for a good year after I opened my gallery and you're one of the most there. regular and supportive people um, to come to my shows. Um, so Eric is gifting me this drawing, which is awesome because it's commemorating the opening of our Inglewood space. And it's about this show. It has the Walt Whitman poem written into Eric. Um, and we've made a poster of that piece um, that is available for $20, um, which is not something we've done before, but I really like it. And I think it adds one more layer um, to the accessibility of the show. And, um, and it's a gorgeous poster. It's the same size, 24 by 30, actually, the poster, because um, it has the white border around. And... Uh, um, so far, the people that have walked away with the poster seem to feel like they won the lottery. Because <laughs> <laughs> right they have an Olsen and, uh, nice. in their possession for $20. Um, and that's taxes, nice. so that's, that's a good deal. Um, uh, and interesting, last night I had good friends over for dinner, Andre and Dan. Um, mm -hmm. And Andre is a huge art aficionado, as you know, and... He was so excited about that idea because it's something they used to always do. And he talked about um, seeing posters of famous artists from the past and their exhibitions in spaces would be uh, promoted with a full size, you know, poster. And no one does that anymore. Yeah, uh, it's, so it's really old cool. school. It's yeah, old I, school. I just, I just thought it'd be kind of light. I thought I'd just try it, you know, uh, when, when I was doing the original give it a, um, I just thought it'd be kind of, I wanted the show to be light, you know, no frames, um, we'll make a poster, yeah. you know, I thought it was the right sort of attitude for the show. Um, I think it is. And it's a gorgeous poster. And, uh, and, and it, it is nice. It's nice, like students or whoever comes in, I love that they have the ability to walk out with something because normally you walk into an art gallery it's, um, you know, unless you're going to drop at least a thousand dollars or, or a lot more, um, it's hard to, uh, um, walk out with something, right? Someone just asked me who is untitled number three. So Eric, I'm just going to go back to that one for yeah. you. Let me just look and see which one that one is. Um, Yeah, that's um, yeah, that's a friend of mine. Sort of like a really, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I I hesitate to describe them too much, you know, because I feel like you know, the the real people that s drive the the forms. Um, but I I think that could be someone, you know, seeing your eye through the crowd. Maybe it's that mm -hmm. one. I, I like the idea that the poem is a little bit like a mystery. You don't know who who in this crowd is the person that the narrator is talking about. Um, but I thought that one, she looks like, to me, after I got, it's sort of like you interpret it a little bit after you make it. She looks like a, she's drinking a martini maybe. or She's uh, sort of a mysterious. Interesting. You see martini, believe it or not, because you know me and my martinis, I see a mixing bowl. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Like she's, she's a making, baker, actually. Like she's a baker. That's crazy. That's subconscious. Yeah, that's interesting. 
or not. <laughs> or not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. I know you have a, a lovely friend who's a pastry chef. Um, anyway. <laughs> Interesting. Thanks for that. Um, the, uh, the show is stunning. And I wish you were here. Um, you should know people that I, I've never gotten more um, phone calls and texts from one single artist in one week as I have from Eric. This week. And I know Good. that it's just been so hard for you to be um, so hands off on this show. And yeah. I, um, I appreciate your trust, actually, is what I want to say, to let me ha receive this work, hang this work without frames, um, and position it all without you here to sort of navigate it. And... Um, you, I don't know if you've just, you're awesome. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you guys have been total pros. So, I mean, from the sketch up to how it's been, uh, I was, she sent me photos of the installation and they had like laser beams to get the levels right in there. I like that. So, uh, shout um, out to Paul Jackson Art Services. Yeah, thank you so much, <laughs> Paul. Excellent job. Um, yeah. It, so it looks like we've got a, just a little bit more time left, right? Yeah. What would you like to do with I, your last seven minutes? Well, there's one last poem I'd like to read. And I mean, forgive me if this is turning into a bit of a, you know, poem. No, no, no. This is uh, the poetry. Session, but, I know. It, it's a huge part of the inspiration um, for the show. Yeah. And so this one, this one's not so much about the show or one, this one, I just, when I read it, you know, I was talking about how I, I really kind of vibed on his attitude about humanity and and sort of looking at something that's really old and and um, um, sort of timeless, but then also something that's ab above and beyond in the cosmos and the universe and and in the 1860s. It's called the Song Universal. Walton. Come, said the muse, sing me a song no poet yet has chanted. Sing me the universal. In this broad earth of ours, amid the measureless grossness and the slag, enclosed and safe within its central heart, nestles the seed perfection. Ev by every life, a share or more or less, none born, but it is born. Concealed or unconcealed, the seed is waiting. Lo, keen-eyed, towering science, as as from tall peaks the modern overlooking, successive absolute fiats issuing. Yet again, lo, the soul above science, for it has history gathered like husks around the globe, for it the entire star myriads roll the sky. In spiral roots by long detours, as much tacking ship upon the sea, for it the partial to the permanent flowing, for it the real to the ideal tends, for it the mystic evolution, not the right only justified, what we call evil also justified, forth from their masks, no matter what, from the huge festering trunk, from craft and guile and tears, health to emerge and joy, joy universal, out of the bulk, the morbid and the shallow, out of the bad majority, the varied countless frauds of men and states, electric, antiseptic, yet cleaving, suffusing all, only the good is universal. It's like that guy writes a dynamite poem, in my opinion. I think you're right. And who was that? Who was the poem? Walt Whitman. That was Walt Whitman, too? Yeah. Wow. Pretty amazing, Eric. Um, I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, he's a really interesting guy. I had no idea you were so into poetry. Is is this I, like? I didn't either. I mean, I've always. Um, it's uh, it's something I've always been interested on the side. 
you know, I've always enjoyed reading and I always enjoyed Jack Kerouac and then from there, Allen Ginsberg. And, and of course, I've always, anyone that knows me knows I'm a massive, uh, like I love Bob Dylan and his poetry. Um, but then you find Walt Whitman and you realize that it's really, that's where Allen Ginsberg got his howl, really mm. was coming out of the tradition of Walt Whitman, but a hundred years later and Kerouac and then Bob Dylan. And so it's kind of, it's again, it's just that continuing thread that ties humanity with other humanities, it seems to me. So it's sort of a new, um, yeah, well, certainly Walt Whitman. It's totally new to me somehow. So it's, it's exciting. Um, thank you for being so uh, personal and lovely through this conversation. Uh, I mean, you know, I love you. I mean, uh, you're amazing. And anytime we've done a show together, your um, conversation about your work never ceases to astound me. Um, you've got such a deep mind. Uh, this, this show feels really special to me um, because I know you made it in such a solo state uh, that everything just feels so expressive and loose, but considered, very considered. Did you hear any of that? Just, just the last little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I said there. such nice things about you. <laughs> <laughs> I can watch it in the, in the reruns. Yes. Um, Love so... in the baggage room. Nice. <laughs> um, so uh, we're down to about the last minute. Um, yeah. Thank you. So I want to thank, first of all, I want to thank all the people who joined us because uh, in these weird virtual times, it's wonderful to feel uh, supported and that people set the time aside to join us. It's just really sweet. So thank you. Um, I want to yeah. mention the online store again for some of you who are just joining us now. So you can go to our website and um, on the menu store, it's there. Um, and um, we're open starting tomorrow uh, for retail Great. hours. And we're looking forward to uh, receiving people in the flesh. We've already had um, people in by, by appointment, not lots, but some. And tons of people coming to the door and just excited. Um, so tomorrow we're open 11 to 6, Sunday open 12 to 5, and our regular hours will be Wednesday through uh, Saturday, 11 to 6, and 12 to 5 on Sundays. So we're going to be closed Monday and Tuesday. But we're going to be here, and I'm really excited um, to receive people in this space and to show them this. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. And thanks, Mika and Jay and everyone else who's helped, uh, helped me put this together. This is I'm, yes. I'm thrilled with this new gallery. So thank you so much. Thank you. And, of course, Salt Design. And uh, yeah, and my new landlord, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. who we know is, is Jim Hill. Um, okay, and uh, have a great sleep now. You get to go to thanks. bed now. And it's thanks time. for joining us, Eric. Um, love. Signing off. Thanks a lot. Bye.